thanks Donald for that uh, analysis of events in Scotland over the last 50 years which, um, which have led to a Scottish Parliament which was uh, put in place as you, as you stated to suppress Scottish nationalism and which led to a referendum in, in which um, we came perilously close to losing Scotland from the Union which shows the, um, the poor thinking behind devolution in the UK in the first place. Its, its primary purpose, as Labour intended it, was in, in Scotland as in Wales to um, suppress nationalism and it's completely failed to do that. So we need to recognise that. I'm Gareth Fennett, by the way, I'm the leader of the UKIP group in the Welsh Assembly, so I'm going to talk about things from a Welsh perspective. Um, I think I'm to some extent reiterating things that Robert and Donald have said already, but we need to make one point very clearly at the outset, which is that UKIP is a unionist party. We're the only true unionist party, I believe, because we do believe in the territorial integrity of the UK. So we believe that Northern Ireland is an integral part of the United Kingdom. We believe that Scotland is an integral part of the United Kingdom. We believe that Wales is also an integral part of the United Kingdom, as is England. And I think that now, in 2019, we are the only party that is really saying that. We want Brexit to happen because we want the sovereignty of the UK Parliament. We don't want to be dictated to by people who um, are not accountable to British voters, so we want to get out of the European Union. So we do, as Gerard Batten said in his, uh, in his broadcast, we do want to make Brexit happen. And as Brexit hasn't happened yet, that's a very good reason for voting UKIP in the Northern Ireland local elections, mm -hmm. to send a message that we want Brexit to happen. Many of us thought, naively, that having won a referendum three years ago, we would have had Brexit by now, but mysteriously, it hasn't happened. So can we please, for one reason, for one good reason, can we vote UKIP in the Northern Ireland local elections to make Brexit happen, to help make Brexit happen, to help send that message to politicians at Westminster to get their mind in gear and get this exit from the European Union that the majority of the electorate voted for. Can we also vote UKIP in the local elections in Northern Ireland as a vote for the sovereignty of the UK and as a vote that Northern Ireland is very much part of the United Kingdom? Devolution has failed in many ways. Of course, it's failed in its primary objective, which was containing the nationalism of the different parts of the UK. We have the, the failure to contain Scottish nationalism. So we have the craziness of, of Nicola Sturgeon running a, a government, a so-called government in Scotland, and trying to push for another referendum on independence. Scottish independence. We have the craziness of, of a system in Northern Ireland in which you have a forced power sharing in which one of the parties involved, Sinn Féin, has no real interest in the long-term viability of the Northern Ireland executive because Sinn Féin's long-term object, long objective, of course, is to destroy Northern Ireland and to bring about a union with the Republic of Ireland. So that is crazy in itself. In Wales, we have endless problems with a creeping um, move towards more and more powers for the Welsh Assembly, which means taking powers away from the UK um, Parliament. So I think the whole thing has failed. Has there been any devolution dividend? In Wales, no. We have to look at um, basic areas of policy, such as health, education, the economy. These are things that matter at ground level to voters. There has been no advance in any of these areas in the 20 years of devolved government in Wales and there are significant failings in these areas. We've fallen down the PISA world rankings in education for instance. So education in Wales, the quality of education has certainly deteriorated in the 20 years in which we've had a devolved government. You could argue that in many areas of the National Health Service we are poorly provisioned in Wales as against England where they don't have a devolved government. There has been no economic improvement in Wales. We are now actually the fourth um, and lowest of, of the four re regions or countries, if you call them countries of the UK. We were third in 1999, we're now fourth. So we've performed poorly economically in the Assembly as well. 
So there hasn't been any devolution dividend for the majority of the voters in Wales, and I believe it's the same in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, now, Donald was talking about the terminology that's used. You do actually have a Welsh government as well. We have a Welsh assembly, but the government calls itself the Welsh government. So we have a Northern Ireland executive, we have a Scottish government, we have a Welsh government. It all gets rather confusing, doesn't it? And it kind of detracts from the sovereignty of the UK government, which is exactly what um, devolution is bringing about, an erosion of sovereignty. Now, it occurs to me that we've fought as a party, UKIP as a party has spent 25, 25 years fighting to, um, to battle against the European Union for the sovereignty of the UK, a sovereignty which was, which was being eroded from without by the European Union. We also need now to be mindful of the fight for sovereignty within the UK and we have to be mindful of the fact that sovereignty is being eroded from within by the existence of the devolved assemblies and parliaments and by their increasing clamouring for more powers and this will continue. So we have to address this matter. Now we've done it in UKIP, we've had a discussion over the last few months about what our policy should be on devolution. We used to be a party that was very signally opposed to devolution and um, this fitted in well with the ideas of sovereignty that we had. Unfortunately in 2011 we sort of took um, a U-turn. Donald mentioned that um, Paul Nuttall was, was very keen on um, solving the issue of, of devolution to the outlying regions by having a devolved English parliament. I think that is really um, a big mistake. It just creates another unnecessary tier of government in England for which there was no appetite. They actually had a referendum in the northeast of England during the, um, the, the dying days of the Labour government in about 2009 and that signally failed. There was no popular support for um, a, a regional government in the northeast of England. We also have to bear in mind that there was a plan from the European Union to divide the UK into 12 regions because, of course, the European Union doesn't want um, a strong UK government. They don't want strong UK sovereignty because they want to impose their will from Brussels. So it plays into their hands and it fits into their agenda to have 12 mini-regions of the UK. So Tony Blair, with his move towards devolution in the late 90s, I think we have to bear in mind that he is also you know, he was also moving towards an EU, uh, an EU favoured model of the UK, in which there would be strong regions but a weakened central government at Westminster. So we have to now move away from that. Unfortunately, in UK, we have moved away from that in the last year, and we do now have a policy across the regions, across Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, where we are opposing devolution in various forms. And this will also benefit voters in England who don't really like the idea that they have less rights in West Sussex than they have in West Lothian, which was the entire West Lothian question as posed by Tan Dayel, who wrote a very interesting book in 1977, which was entitled Devolution, The End of Britain? Question mark, and it predicted something called the Balkanisation of Britain. And we are heading towards the Balkanisation of Britain in, in less and until we can actually halt the endless growth of devolution, which will endlessly erode the Westminster Parliament. So I think that we do have to um, embrace this anti-devolution policy, which fortunately we are doing in UKIP now. I think we have to remember that the sovereignty of Westminster is crucial. We can devolve powers to local government, which, the, which UKIP in Northern Ireland is proposing, and that's a very viable solution. We can devolve powers where we can. In other areas, we can use the experience of the MPs. In Westminster, the Scottish MPs could sit in a Scottish Grand Committee. We used to have a Welsh Grand Committee as well. So you can actually utilise the MPs. I mean, we have 40 MPs in Wales, but there's a Welsh Assembly. So what the heck are 40 MPs doing all the time in Westminster? There's damn all for them to do. So can we please now embrace the anti-devolution policy and can we remember that UKIP is for the Union and can we proceed on that basis and good luck in Northern Ireland with your candidates in the local elections. Thank you.